last class we discussed about the meaning of financial system and the functions of financial system today we'll be starting uh, one of the four components of financial system there are four components of a financial system institutions assets markets and services so today we'll be dealing with financial services let's look at the meaning Financial services can be defined as the activities, benefits provided by the financial institutions. It not only helps to raise funds, but also to ensure their efficient use. Now, in general, what is financial service is the services provided by banks, by institutions. Okay. Now, these activities or services are for the benefit of customers or for the benefit of institutions now they are of two benefits it not only helps to raise funds but also to ensure their efficient use now banks or other financial institutions for example uh, there are fin financial institution called as nabad called as exim bank that is specifically aiming at a certain kind of service only now exim bank certainly focuses on the exporters and importers only nabad focuses only on agricultural activities or the rural uh, something with related to uh, farmers and agriculture banks is an open institution for any kind of customers you may be a student you may be a, a businessman or you may be an institution anybody can approach a bank and take the financial services so these uh, financial services not only help you to raise funds but also ensure their efficient use if you can remember the first day when we uh, spoke about the functions it meant about the flow of money in the economy for the development of economy so if the money has to flow in a manner that it would be beneficial to the economy that means whoever is borrowing money or taking the financial service must put it to the efficient use must put it to efficient utilization the money invested in any particular asset or investment must not go waste it must have enough returns or it must be profitable to the person borrowing or to the person giving out as a loan let's look at the features of financial services first and foremost financial services are intangible so services are always invisible you cannot touch them but only you can experience them okay it is invisible you can only experience them so all kinds of financial services are invisible in nature and therefore becomes very essential to maintain high standards in service delivery which means to say that anything which you can see touch there is always a direct relationship or a direct experience you have uh, with a kind of products uh, where you can see and touch and feel that product right but in terms of services it is not so because services are intangible or invisible so therefore whoever is providing the service that is the service providers have to maintain a very high standards to attract more customers or to set higher standards of service delivery second customer oriented today whatever services that you enjoy any kind of financial services uh, that can be merchant banking credit rating or stock broking anything of sort originally was introduced when the service providers understood the needs and preferences of customers so let's say if i am the service provider i first need to know what do the people require what do they need in terms of service what do you prefer in terms of service so i first need to what understand what is that you require what is that you uh, what is that your preferences or taste and preferences changing over the period of time so service provider has to first conduct a survey or a study to understand the needs and requirements of customers and then i'm going to plan my service accordingly so every kind of financial service is customer oriented so it's basically i would say in simple terms it is tailor made 
so according to the your personal needs i am going to design my financial services third performance variability now in this financial services uh, it might differ from company to company right hdfc bank may provide different kind of services and sbi may uh, provide different kind of services to different kind of customers only reason is uh, although on a common level both are banks okay both accept deposits and lend loans but on terms of rendering services it is different or i would say it will vary from institution to institution for example credit card services provided by two companies to a different category of customers now i don't know how many of you have a credit card but a credit card services provided by two companies now let's say uh, there is platinum card there is gold card right now i'm going to categorize my customers who are, who i'm going to issue credit card based on their credibility okay based on their bank balance let's say the bank balance is uh, 50 lakhs then the benefits that the, the customers that i'm going to offer to them the services and the credit limit will automatically change on the other side let's say a person has a balance of only rupees 5 lakh in his account so based on his credentials my credit card services that i will provide to him will also vary okay so the performance of financial services highly variable fourth point inseparability means coordination between the service provider and the customer should be perfect it is performed simultaneously that is the production and supply are inseparable meaning to say when i say inseparable the service is not separate from the service provider now for example uh, if it's a doct uh, doctorate service or a hospital right medical can i separate the treatment from the doctor no treatment is given by the doctor if there is no doctor there is no medical treatment available that is the meaning of inseparability understood now if banks are providing the service called of deposits or lending of loans i cannot separate the bank and its services the bank and the services are one meaning to say they are inseparable so the production and supply are inseparable so the production is what the person who offers the service supply is the kind of service they offer so therefore financial services are performed simultaneously the fifth feature is dynamism financial services are very dynamic in nature they have to be constantly updated and redefined on the basis of changes that are taking place in the financial system dynamic means what constantly changing on the opposite uh, what is opposite of dynamic is being rigid or being fixed right does not change irrespective of the changes taking place in the uh, in the economy or in the market or in the uh, industry but dynamic means what constantly updating ourselves to the required changes so even financial service providers have to update themselves based on what will they update based on the changes that are taking place in the financial system for an example when banks were introduced in india or the banking system was uh, established in india they only started with basic of accepting deposits and paying interest on deposits then later they came up with lending loans to the business people or lending loans to people etc and as and when uh, the standard of living increased and uh, you know the people's preferences and the needs and requirements changed they also today came up with separate kind of loan availability or category of loan availability today it's not just one uh, concept of loan today we have variety of loan you have educational loan right you have a personal loan you have a vehicle loan etc the financial services are updated or redefined based on the changes that are taking place in the financial system not only in terms of money it can be reforms that are taken place by the government the taxation system uh, uh, you know the standard of living of people all these are going to impact um, 
and update the services provided by the service provider. So these are the five different features. It is intangible, it is customer oriented or tailor made, it is the performance is variable, it is inseparable and it is dynamic in nature. So as I told there are four components right. So today we'll be looking at financial services. Financial services is subdivided into asset based and fee based. Under asset, ba asset based we have eight different categories of services. It's called as leasing, higher purchase, consumer credit, bill discounting, venture capital, housing finance, insurance and factoring. Under fee based we have four categories merchant banking, credit rating, stock broking and merger. So today we'll be looking at only fee based services, only the four under that, four kinds of services. Let's start with the first one, merchant banking. So merchant banking is a system where the basic banking services along with that there is something called as consultancy services provided. Okay, so this merchant banking facility acts as a financial engineer for a business. Let's look at the meaning. The term merchant banking refers to a financial institution that conducts underwriting, loan services, financial advising and fundraising services for large corporations and high net worth individuals. Now here notice what is merchant banking. It not only provides you basic accepting of deposits and lending of loans but what does it does extra? Merchant banking also provides or gives you other kinds of services like loan services, financial advice. You, you can go to the bank, you say I have a surplus amount of rupees 5 lakh and I would like to invest in a stock market. Okay, please give me or guide uh, with regard to this aspect. So that is called as financial advising. The banks are going to advise you which is the prominent place for your investment which gives you maximum return based on your risk taking capability. Okay, and also fundraising services. If you want to say I'm an entrepreneur and I want to raise, uh, you know, uh, 50 lakhs of rupees, right? I want to raise funds. So banks and services will also help you how can you raise these services with minimum cost of capital okay so they're going to advise you or they're going to uh, uh, guide you in terms of financial aspects they happen for large corporations and also high net worth individuals large corporations means what companies institutions firms okay what is high net worth individuals means those are individuals who have a huge bank balance or they are very well settled like let's say Anil Ambani, Narayan Murthy. Understood? Now these are high net worth individuals. Their bank balance or their asset balance is way high. So they are called as high net worth. So merchant banking is provided to both. It is provided to institutions as well as individuals who are high net worth. Now what kind of services extra do they provide? like portfolio management, project counseling, debenture trusteeship. Now what is portfolio management? Now portfolio is for an example if I have rupees 1 lakh with me okay my surplus savings amount and I would like to invest but I have no idea about how does entire finance work, uh, how does how is this risk and uh, return con uh, connected to each other. I have completely no idea. So I go to financial service providers and ask them to manage my portfolio. So they will advise me instead of putting 1 lakh entirely into bank as of FD or RD or let's say 1 lakh entirely into a post office savings, they will advise me put 20,000 into bank, okay, another 30,000 into debenture, another 30,000 into stock market, another 20,000 into government debenture. Okay, so what are they doing? They are classifying the entire amount of 1 lakh into different avenues of investment. Why? The return and risk will differ from each investment channel to another. 
project counseling is just they're going to advise you which are the best possible ways or the time to start your project okay and what are the ways you can advertise your project or raise funds uh, funds from institutions etc debenture trusteeship is from when can you take up a debenture when can a company borrow money from debenture holders reason being not everybody can take up debenture as a part of capital because it has a financial risk because if you have studied in your puc debenture holders will demand interest irrespective you as a company make profits or make losses right they you have to pay them interest what happens if you don't pay them interest then they debenture holders are going to sell the company's assets and recover their part of investment so that is a huge financial risk on the heads of company so therefore we need to carefully analyze our repaying capability and then take up certain decisions hope you understood the first point merchant banking the second point is or the second service is credit rating now all of you have given a feedback on a certain uh, if you even if you have go, uh, gone to a hotel or uh, gone to a restaurant or to anywhere they are always ask you for a feedback okay please rate our services right it can be a salon services or it can be a restaurant services anywhere they ask always ask you for a feedback okay or they might even give you a, a, a you know space to write uh, is there any suggestion for us is there any changes you uh, are looking forward uh, for us to update right so that is called as credit rating generally right you are rating a person's performance you are rating a product's performance now here in financial services i am going to rate an organization's credibility i repeat credit rating is where i assess where i quantify assessment of the credit worthiness of a borrower in general terms or with a respect to a particular debt or a financial obligation right now in general you guys have understood what is credit rating you are generally assessing the performance of a person or performance of a product now in terms of financial service as i just told you right uh, debenture irrespective of you earning profits or you earning losses you have to pay them the promised rate of interest now each companies every year go through credit rating or even individuals like as i told high net worth individuals or even for a common man right let's say uh, i have borrowed a loan uh, from syndicate bank okay two years back i have borrowed for an example a loan from syndicate bank of rupees 5 lakh and today this year again i am going to go uh, i am going to approach axis bank to take another loan of rupees 10 lakh now the first thing axis bank will do is check my history of payments understand they are going to check how credit worthy i am now first they are going to ask me is have i taken previously any loan and my answer is going to be yes i have taken so they will take my details how much amount which bank at what rate of interest once they collect this information they will have a connection with the you know all the banks are connected with sharing the information of customers especially those who have borrowed the loan so they will take my details and contact syndicate bank and ask whether so and so person has taken a loan and the bank will tell yes at this so and so date so and so percentage of interest yes this person has borrowed the next question is has this person repaid correct that's an important question has this person repaid timely that is also important repayment is important and at what time period are you repaying is also equally important now let's say the syndicate bank previously has given me time until 2 years to repay what if i have taken only 1 year to repay instead of 2 years that means more than the time limit i have quickly repaid back the rupees 5 lakh so will axis bank be happy to give me loan yes because why i have kept my word and i have written back all the money that i have borrowed on the other side let's look at the opposite side 
what if I have absconded the payment for syndicate bank? Will syndicate bank give a good uh, feedback about me as a customer? No. Syndicate bank will tell, first of all, two years back what she has taken loan from our bank only, she has not repaid. So please do not give her the loan. You understanding? So this is how the banking system works. Every individual, the moment he takes loan, okay, the credit score will be attached to that person. Is he paying his interest timely? Okay, is he making his full repayment? If you can understand um, this entire example, I hope you would understand this concept of credit rating. So based on my repayment capability, if I have repaid entirely to Syndicate Bank, Syndicate Bank will give me on a score of 10. They will give, they will give me a score of let's say 9. Okay, on a score of 10, they will give me 9 or 9.5. So, seeing that rating, Access Bank will understand, okay, this person or this customer is a good credit worthy person. So, let me also give loan to this person. Understood? So, on the same way, if the credit rating, if my syndicate bank is giving me just 4 points, okay, out of 10 is giving me just 4 points, then Access Bank will deny my loan. Okay, it will deny giving me any kind of loan today. Understood? So, every bank, once you start taking a loan from any bank, this is how the bank will process your history of customer. So, what are the agencies that credit rate? Crystal and Care. These are the very, uh, you know, renowned um, credit rating agencies which rate individuals and which also rate companies. If you know, uh, if you have observed in the financial documents of uh, companies, they would have given a credit rating of A, A grade or A plus or B, B plus etc. What does this grade signify? This signifies the credibility or repayment capability of those organizations or of those companies. So, CRISL stands for Credit Rating Information Services of India Limited. CARE stands for Credit Analysis and research in equities. Now, if you are a customer, okay, if you are an individual who has a savings of 5 lakh rupees and you would like to give it as a debenture to XYZ company, the first thing you need to do as a debenture holder is check at the credit rating of that company. If the credit rating of the company is good, then only you must invest. If it is not good, if they have a very low rating, then you must look for some other company. Hope you have understood the second point. Let's move on to the third one called as stock broking. You have, you have heard about um, uh, Bangalore Stock Exchange, or Bombay Stock Exchange, right? Uh, National Stock Exchange, etc. So, we are going to study about that. What is stock broking? It is a professional advisory services. A stock broker is a professional trader who buys and sells shares on behalf of clients. Now, let's take the same example. You have uh, a surplus amount of rupees 1 lakh and you would like to invest in share market, okay? Share market in let's say National Stock Exchange. But in order to decide to which company to invest, when to buy, when to sell is not an easy decision to make. Understand? Stock broking is not a easy profession or it is not a easy easy to make certain decisions. It's very fragile and it's very uh, you know important to take the right decisions at the even within the seconds gap. Okay, so therefore uh, the uh, the share market prices go up and down every single second of the day. Therefore, if you want to invest that rupees one lakh you need to understand all the technicality on, uh, behind the stock market analysis. Now, if you say, I just have the money, but I don't have the knowledge of stock market. I do not know how to analyze. I do not know how to make quick decisions. So, how do I go about this? Then comes into picture stock broker. Now, who is a stock broker? He is a person who is registered with SEBI that is Securities Exchange Board of India 
who makes all kinds of uh, who studies the market who is a professional in his nature in his work and he can make sound decisions so all you need to do is pay him certain commission or fees and he is going to do all the decision making of buying and selling of shares on behalf of you understand you have the money and he has the knowledge so therefore you give him the money and you tell him i want so much percentage of interest every month which company you invest which company you sell i am not bothered i just want so much amount of returns so it is the stock broker with his knowledge and expertise uses your money and thus decisions on your behalf so this entire process of decision making or investing is called as stock broking hope you understood the third point the last one is merger you have you have seen so many companies merging with each other okay don't confuse with acquisition acquisition is acquiring one company taking over one company merger means two companies willingly come up together and want to combine and create a new company right they dissolve their existing companies and then they form up a new company let's look at the meaning a merger is an agreement that unites two existing companies into one new company i would say if let's say x company okay x company is one of the uh, leading company in a particular industry and y is also leading company in an industry instead of both fighting against each other okay because they are competitors in the industry instead of both competing against each other what they decide is let's merge and become a another one larger company so companies are advised about the merger and its procedures to be followed as a process of liquidation as i told if two existing companies has to liquidate and then form a new company this entire process is definitely not easy in the eyes of rbi in the eyes of sebi it is a long legal procedure you need to be answerable and you to justify why you want to merger what is the reason of merger for both the companies have to answer and what will the benef benefit be after you merge all these questions and all the legal formalities have to be fulfilled so financial institutions also give services in advising both the companies if they are willing to merge themselves what is the procedures they have to follow as a process of liquidation okay so it is a huge process this merger this concept maybe in uh, in theory it might be uh, seem simple but in practical it is a very huge process okay so these are the four kinds of financial services under fee based okay we have just covered fee based merchant banking we have covered credit rating stock broking and merger